the internet, the third from last frontier. These are the episodes of the YouTube show GameSat. It's moderately entertaining mission to seek out old games and old game consoles. To boldly review games that may or may not have been reviewed before. takes a long time. <sighs> Way too long. And you can feel every second of it. And it's not a good feeling either. <laughs> it no, freaking no. hurts. Anyway, computer. <phone rings> Begin program game stack 1.629 alpha 2692.67. Affirmative. Stupid computer. I said 0. 0.7, not 0. 0.8. Much better. Much better. Anyway, hello and welcome to GameSack, and yes, we are talking about Star Trek video games. <laughs> oh, well, there's a lot of them, and I know you are a big Star Trek fan. Yes. Whereas me, I'll watch it, but I don't follow it. I don't know all the characters, but, you know, I'm willing to play these games. Okay, well, let's just shut the hell up and get into it. Okay, I want to start off with some Star Trek Deep Space Nine love. Let's try Deep Space Nine Crossroads in Time for the Super Nintendo. This is a side-scrolling game that takes place both on and off of the space station. It feels like they actually put a tiny bit of effort into this one. Well, I mean the actual game design could certainly be better, but otherwise it's not too bad. You mainly play as Commander Sisko. That's right, Commander Sisko. This game takes place during the show's earlier seasons. In the beginning of the game, Sisko takes it upon himself to do everyone else's job and solve certain station mysteries and shenanigans. I eventually encounter what appear to be Bajorans up to no good. So just like on the show, you punch them in the face until they die. Sisko don't mess around. I mean, look at this. He hauls ass through the station. There ain't no time for walking. And he does all of this to the tune of some very unspace-like beats. You do eventually go down to the planet and explore other places as well. You have various weapons and items that you can switch between once you collect them. The control kinda sucks though. Trying to take out these flying things with a phaser is a chore because you have to press up to aim up, but Sisko keeps wanting to face the wall when I aim up. Stupid Sisko. Even the menu system is kind of clunky when you have to use it. Sometimes you switch to another character so you can have them go and do their own thing. I guess Sisko just can't do everything. Most of the time you're just running around talking to people which will advance the game. Back and forth you go and sometimes you can't even find who you need to talk to until you talk to someone else. Pretty exciting, I say. Still, once you get used to it, it's not too terribly awful. I am pretty disappointed that there's no baseball on Cisco's desk though. I guess the Super Nintendo just isn't powerful enough to put a baseball there. This game's also on the Genesis and the graphics are brighter but also a bit more grainy. The music is a touch more rockin' and I think I prefer it here even though neither game will remind you of the show. It's just too bad that this is the only console game ever based on Deep Space Nine. Nowadays, a lot of people consider it their favorite or second favorite Star Trek series. But back when it was on the air, not so much, so I guess it's kind of understandable why there's not more video game love for this show. Star Trek 25th Anniversary for the Game Boy. I could have used this title in our episode Games That Can't Decide What They Want to Be since it has multiple playstyles. 
You start out on a grid that has many barriers blocking your destination. You move the Enterprise in one direction and when it hits its first barrier, the game changes to a side-scrolling shooter. These start out very easy and gradually get tougher as you make your way. There's a map on the bottom of the screen so you know how much more of this fairly boring shooter you have to endure. Every now and again a small warp gate will appear letting you bypass a small part of the level. There should be more of these because I want to bypass it all! Once you get to the end, you get to move the Enterprise again on the grid and do another shooter level. Even though these only take a few minutes to get through, it feels like it's a lot longer. At least the backgrounds and enemies change though. Once you reach your destination, you beam down to the planet's surface with Spock and Bones to play an overhead adventure. You have to scour the planet in search of parts of the Disruptor. Your partners will radio and give you hints on plant life and enemies that roam around. Ultimately, you will use the tricorder to zero in on where the parts are hidden. You have your phaser for a weapon and you can stun or kill enemies. There's life and more phaser ammo laying around the planet to pick up if you need it. And you'll need both for sure. These parts aren't as boring as the shooter levels, but they're definitely not loads of fun either. Overall, I'd say I enjoyed the game about as much as the show. This is Star Trek Voyager Elite Force released by Activision for the PC. Set your phasers to frag because this one is an arena tournament first person shooter which uses the Quake 3 arena engine. Basically, the first person to get 25 frags wins whether you're playing with others or just playing with yourself, which I do a lot. I guess being stuck in the Delta Quadrant, the Voyager crew have absolutely nothing better to do than run around the ship and kill each other. Actually, it takes place on the holodeck, so sadly nobody really dies. You have various weapons, sub-weapons, defensive items, and secondary weapons that are all just sitting around waiting for anyone to pick up. It plays well enough, and I guess this was before the WASD control scheme was popularized. I'm playing with the mouse and the arrow keys here, and it works fine, and I'm sure I could adjust it to be even better if I wanted to. Visually, it moves quickly with a good frame rate, albeit with a lot of screen tearing. In fact, I didn't see a V-Sync option anywhere. Also, everything seems to be really dark. Turning up the brightness all the way doesn't help much. I actually brightened up the footage a bit in editing so you could see it better. Next, I simply could not get any music to run and I have no idea why. Seems like a lot of work to get this game to run properly. Other than that, it's a run of the mill frag fest. This game was also released on the PlayStation 2 the next year. This one has a single player campaign mission that didn't seem to be in the PC version at all, at least not that I could find. It also has some voiceovers from the actual cast. Tuvok, Voyager's chief of security, assembled an elite force of security personnel named the Hazard Team. Aside from that, it's pretty much the same except that I feel that the visuals are better here because you can actually see them. Sadly, the game only runs in 480i and the frame rates can get pretty low sometimes. There is more ambient sound in this version though. And finally, you can't even play as everyone's favorite character on Voyager, Echeb. As you recall, Echeb was a teen rescued from the Borg by the Voyager crew. He ended up being a great asset and helped out Voyager in many situations with his smarty smarts. This would be the perfect game to have him and even little Naomi Wildman in. I mean, there's a bunch of nobodies in here that we've never heard of, but no Echeb? I wonder how Echeb actor Manu Ante Reime feels about this. It's first person shooter action that won't quit, but be prepared, you can't play as Echeb. He's right. There's no Echeb. God damn it! Take that, Activision. No Echeb. No Echeb on timelines. No Echeb on Star Trek Online. No Echeb on Elite Force. There's just no more Echeb. Just Monet. Just crusty old beer bellied Monet. Hey, what's this? Game sack. Yeah, Joe and Dave might take me on. That'd be cool. Joe and Dave suck. Game sack sucks! Like I'd want to end up there. <sighs> Hey guys, we got a cool interview with Manu Ante Reme, who played Echeb on Voyager for two seasons. 
So tell me, Manu, do you like video games? I do like video games. I um, think my favorite video game is uh, Dragon's Lair. Dragon's Lair, really? I remember when Dragon's Lair came out when I was a kid, I pumped so many quarters into that machine. So I've got to ask you, how do you really feel about not being included in the Voyager games that we showed? Oh, I, I'm not... I'm lying. I, I don't. I like. I would like to be included. I yeah. mean, in um, Star Trek uh, Online, they have my character, and in Star Trek Timelines, they have my character. But I think they even like might have hired somebody else to do my voice. And in Star Trek Online, I just bounce around. I walk around on J7, and I do nothing. Uh, and you can bump into each other, but you can't play them. Oh. So I would. I would like to to be in a Star Trek game. I would like to do work in video games in general. Most of my cast does, uh, and so you know, if anybody out there wants a uh, freckled-faced actor in their video game, I'd love to do it. So, what are you doing these days? Mostly sitting at home and crying. Uh -huh. uh, actually, um, a lot of things. Um, right now, my film *Fifth Passenger* it's a sci-fi thriller that I produced with my friends Scott Baker and Morgan Loria. Stars Doug Jones from *From the Shape of Water* and. Um, it's awesome. It's kind of like Aliens meets Star Trek. Mm -hmm. um, great story, and it's available on demand, Blu-ray, DVD, everywhere that you like movies. I also have a project called The Circuit, uh, which is a science fiction anthology film that I have in development, and it's got actors from Game of Thrones and Star Trek and Star Wars. Uh, it's a mega project that we're getting started. We're still looking for funding. We raised a bunch of money on Kickstarter, but we're also offering people to invest and you can find out all about it at thecircuitfilm.com or contact me directly after you go to the website at monuentereme at thecircuitfilm.com Awesome. Well, back to the games. Star Trek Elite Force 2 was only released on Mac and PC in 2003. This is the Mac version here. Despite the opening narration provided by Patrick Stewart as Picard in showing the Enterprise E, this one still takes place primarily in the Voyager universe from what I've seen so far. It has a single player campaign that is very similar to, but not exactly like the PS2 version of the first Elite Force game. You start out on a Borg ship trying to do various stuff including finding your teammates. Since this game is newer, it's a bit more fleshed out than it was on the PS2 and it looks sharper and better all around, though the screen tearing is definitely still here. This time you'll be using your tricorder a lot to modulate the locks on doors and whatnot. And you'll also be spending a lot of time crawling through cramped spaces to find things to shoot which will unlock force fields. And of course, there's still the arena mode where you're trying to get the most frags. You can choose from a variety of different stages including a giant federation bridge which is weird, but whatever. Overall, as a single player game, it definitely improves upon the first. Still no each of though. Follow GameSack on Twitter at GameSack and at GameSack Dave on Instagram at GameSack Official and check out our Patreon if you want. Well, that Echeb guy seems pretty nice. Echeb is cool. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd like to be his friend, I think. You should. And the world needs more Echeb. Yeah, I think so. I mean, he seems a little lonely, like he's been left out a little bit. I'd, I'd like to be his friend. <laughs> you should be his friend. Okay. Star Trek 25th Anniversary for the NES is a different game from the Game Boy title. In this installment, the crew of the Enterprise gets accidentally sent to an unknown area in space. The dilithium crystals have been fused together, so they have to get more on neighboring planets so they can make it back home. You'll spend the majority of the game solving puzzles on planet surfaces so you can find those crystals. I like the picture of Kirk and Spock riding the elevator down to the beam room or whatever it's called. Kirk is always holding a spatula wanting to make a quick stop in the kitchen to cook some eggs or something. The first planet is funny as you're millions of light years from Earth and you find aliens that look like primitive Earthlings and can speak English. They also have cats! Anyways, like I said, you do a lot of puzzle solving and not much killing. You can use your phaser but mainly just to stun alien creatures or to open up doorways. It won't take long for you to find those dilithium crystals and move on to the next planet and then back home. Not a bad game, but not a very interesting one either.
There was even a game show game called, not surprisingly, Star Trek The Game Show and it was released only on PC in 1997. This one is basically a trivia fest, so if you like trivia then there might be a chance you'll like this one. It's hosted by John DeLancey in character as Q and his Q assistant. And of course, just like you'd expect, he derides you at any and every chance he gets. Let's hear it for blind luck. <laughs> Gee thanks, I feel great now. Despite absolutely loving Star Trek, I kinda suck at trivia so I didn't do as well at this one as I had hoped to. There are questions about all the different Star Trek series, up to Voyager anyway. There are four sections to this game divided into quadrants. The first one is simply multiple choice answers to a bunch of different questions. In the beta quadrant, you actually have to type in the answer. I hope you get the spelling correct, because if you don't, you're out of luck. And as a guy who sucks at remembering names and stuff like that, I did pretty badly here. In the gamma quadrant, it's back to more multiple choice answers for each question. But if you get an answer wrong, the points you would have gotten had you answered it correctly are subtracted from your score. Yeah, that's super fun, no pressure at all! And the final quadrant depends on which series you get stuck with. I got stuck with Deep Space Nine, which I've only seen in its entirety once. So I probably did pretty badly, but the game doesn't really let you know. Overall, there's a bunch of different questions and you won't get the same ones for a while when you replay it. But if you can find another Star Trek nerd to play against, I think this would be pretty fun. And I'm jealous of you, having friends who are also Star Trek dorks. Why can't I be so lucky? Look, if somebody doesn't do something soon, I'm going to be assimilated into the Borg Collective. Clue number five. When Kirk found him, he and his people were just globes of energy. Oh, 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 Sargon! Of all the game shows in all the galaxies, you had to come into mind. Let's take a look at Star Trek The Next Generation, the advanced holodeck tutorial on the Game Gear. It was also released on the Game Boy and NES. Holodeck tutorial, huh? Sounds pretty exciting. An entire game that's nothing but a tutorial. Being a holodeck tutorial, you're not in danger of really hurting anyone, so go for it and take risks as you command the crew of the Enterprise. Captain Picard has a bunch of missions for you to conquer one at a time. He'll brief you on the situation and then it's up to you to decide what to do next. First you tell that pasty looking humanoid Data to set a course and what speed you need to get there. There's lots of different types of missions and they all seem pretty shallow. For example, in one mission you have to shoot down an enemy ship that's chasing a freighter. Being a simulator, you'll also need to tell that weird looking wharf dude to put up the shields and arm the ship for battle. Without that, you're useless. Another mission will have you beaming up people that are stuck on a planet. This mission is a little more deep since you have to put the Enterprise into the planet's orbit. And to do that, you have to fly through rings. It seems a little strange, but whatever. Once in orbit, you play the beam up game. You have to isolate the people that are moving around on a board. For some reason, they have to be picked up in a certain order. Find the one that maxes out the lock bar and then have that dude O'Brien beam him up. There's all sorts of missions for you to conquer. For a sim game, it's kind of fun, but you know, the excitement isn't off the scales or anything. Each of these versions have very slight differences in presentation. For example, on the Game Boy and NES titles, when you're warping to your destination, it looks like you're flying through star fields. On the Game Gear, it has a graphic of the Enterprise warping away from the camera and then warping back towards the camera. Other than that, these games all control and play exactly alike. I will say that I did enjoy this one more than I thought I would, and I guess if you're a Star Trek fan, you'd like it even more than me. This is Star Trek Tactical Assault for the Sony PSP. It's also available for the Nintendo DS. First of all, look at the ship. Who modeled this? It's supposed to be a Constitution class like the Enterprise, but it looks so wrong. Stupid Bethesda. Next, you control some randos, not the actual Star Trek crew that we all know and love. I mean, how boring is that? Piloting your ship can be very frustrating. Even getting it to turn around feels like it takes a year. And you can only fire one phaser blast about every five or 10 seconds and it takes about 10 hits to even disable a section of the enemy's shields. Sure, you can upgrade ships later on, but the one you start out with is just so boring that you don't want to keep playing until you can do that. Where's the fun? Answer, it's nowhere. But hey, it's on the PSP, so that's kind of cool, I guess.
Here's Star Trek The Next Generation for the Super Nintendo and Genesis. Weirdly, the Genesis version is called Echoes from the Past while the Super Nintendo version is called Future's Past. The former was published by Sega and the latter by Spectrum Holobyte, but they're both basically the same game. And guess what? In these simulation games, you take control of the Enterprise and do all sorts of good deeds around the universe. As you'd expect, the game has much more depth and deeper gameplay than the 8-bit generation games. As you sit on the control deck of the ship, you get briefed on what's going on. From here, you can set a course in the con. There's lots of places listed here, so be sure to pay attention to what the captain has to say or you'll have to go back and talk to him again. Once you set a course, just select your warp speed and go. As the ship is warping to its destination, you can check out the ship's library for information on just about anything it seems. Then you can go to engineering and divvy up the ship's resources. Once you reach your destination, pick your party of up to four and beam down to the surface. After you run around solving puzzles and killing enemies, you'll eventually complete your mission and then it's on to the next. At random times, you'll be intercepted by enemy ships that want to pick a fight. From here, you go into an overhead battle where you can shoot photons and lasers until you take your enemy down or vice versa. If you die, then it's game over, which really sucks. As far as differences between the versions go, there's quite a few. The missions that you're sent on are the same, but just look at the differences in graphics. The Genesis version has more storyline and you'll read a lot more conversations, whereas the SNES version is straight to the point. The Super Nintendo version is a lot easier to figure out on what you need to do. The Genesis version makes you feel like you have to figure it out more on your own. The music is also vastly different. The Super Nintendo version is composed nicer and sounds much better even though it's pretty jazzy and not completely fitting to the game's atmosphere. The Genesis music is just ew. Both versions are fine, but I think I prefer the SNES version for the music and easiness of getting around. All right, Dave, are these games making you want to watch the show even more? Well, you know, with all the beaming up and beaming down and all the stuff that happens in Star Trek, not really. How about you? <laughs> I already want to watch I, the show. I mean, I, that, that, yeah. if anything, I think some of these games are an insult to Star Trek. Uh, yeah, they so, very well could be. So. so let's just get on to the rest of them. Next up is Star Trek Legacy on the Xbox 360. It's also on the PC. This one lets you play as ships from all eras. In fact, that's all it lets you do. You control the ships themselves and generally just fight enemies. Sometimes you can scan stuff and sometimes you can beam away teams to and fro, but mostly it's just ship to ship phaser battles. Sounds exciting, right? Well, it should be, but sadly it's too slow to generate much excitement. All five captains that existed at the time lent their voices to this game. This is Enterprise. The campaign mode starts you out controlling Enterprise. No, not the USS Enterprise, the Enterprise with Captain Archer based on the 2001 TV series. Scott Bakula does a lot of good voiceovers in character, though you never see him or anyone else for that matter, just the ship itself. I'm under orders to bring you safely back to Vulcan. Can you give me a good reason why we should head to this outpost? Still, it's really cool to be able to control a lot of different ships. Open hailing frequency. Yes, the original Enterprise from the show was actually meant to have these blue lights on the warp nacelles like you see here, but it was too expensive back then. Sure looks really good this way though, I like it. And of course, my favorite Enterprise of all time, the refit model, is here, even though they give you the 1701A. It's an absolutely gorgeous ship and it's well represented here. I just wish that the gameplay matched the fantastic ship visuals. Initiate Sky. Actually, there is one exception I have to take with the ship graphics. Look at Voyager when it goes to warp. The nacelles don't move up into position like they're supposed to. Not exactly game breaking, but trust me, Star Trek nerds like myself are going to notice stupid things like that. Also, there isn't a good sense of scale to the universe here. The planets and moons all seem tiny, not much bigger than your ship. The game's not awful, I guess I was just hoping for a bit more with all the series that were represented in this one. I mean, it's cool that you can have the original Enterprise fight the Enterprise D and stuff, so it does earn some cool points. But I just wish that in the campaign mode I could see the view screens and stuff when the ships are talking to each other so the voiceovers could have a bit more personality. Oh well, it really could be a lot worse. 
to fleet. We can't hold out much longer. All hands abandon ship. This is Star Trek Encounters from Bethesda, released exclusively for the PlayStation 2 in 2006. This one is similar to Star Trek Legacy that Joe talked about where you just control the ships. In fact, this one uses the same music from that game. Well, I should say that Legacy uses the same music as this one. At the beginning, you start out as the NX-01 Enterprise from the 2001 TV series, but all others are represented as well. Specifically, it takes place at the beginning of the show's third season featuring the Zindi threat. At least that's what Joe tells me. I mean, I don't really watch Star Trek, so yeah. You fly your ship around through rings, or you're blowing up radioactive asteroids, which is cool! Except for the radioactive part. The control isn't too bad here, except for judging your height. Your height in relation to other objects is determined by the little blue bar attached to them. It's really weird, and I don't feel having to worry about height in an overhead view adds to the game. The Zindi attack a lot, and in this part I need to disable but not destroy the cruiser by taking out its engines. If you blow it up, you destroy the ship and fail the mission. I don't know where its engines are. I presume they're at the back where the thrust is coming out. You know, I guess I'll destroy that area. Nope, there goes the entire ship. No matter what I target, the entire ship always blows up. Maybe I should set my phasers to stun. There's also the skirmish mode where you can choose to have a fight with a lot of different ships from Star Trek. This could be better, but you know, it's not horrible. This is Star Trek for the Xbox 360 from Namco Bandai. It's also available for the PC and PlayStation 3. This one is kind of... oh, these guys. This isn't Star Trek. Oh well, this game holds a lot of promise though it feels woefully rushed. This one is based on and takes place after the 2009 Star Trek movie, and it was released to coincide with Star Trek Into Darkness, one of the crappiest movies I've ever seen in my life. And yes, of course I own a copy. Some people call this JJ Trek, or New Trek, or the Kelvin Timeline. You run around as Kirk or Spock doing mostly action-y things. Like I said, it has a lot of promise. It's mostly pretty good actually, just rough around some of the edges. Here I keep getting blasted by the sun even though I'm ducking behind cover to avoid specifically that. I literally cannot crouch any further and yet I still take damage again and again until I die. But otherwise, the game looks nice, and it's also voiced by the complete J.J. New Trek Kelvin Timeline cast, which is really cool. It is highly unusual, sir, but I believe it's some kind of rip in the actual fabric of space. I want a game like this, but with the original, next generation, Deep Space Nine, and Voyager characters. And include Echeb. The weirdest part is that William Shatner made a commercial for this game and recreated the old 60s fight he had with a Gorn. And I've got to say, that's way cooler than the game. open the door together. Star Trek Conquest was released for the PlayStation 2 in 2007 and on the Wii in 2008. Again, it's from Bethesda who really got their money's worth on the Star Trek license. And here we go again, it's basically what you would expect from them. You control only the ships themselves in a combat arena. However, this one has an interesting campaign mode. You can select from a bunch of different races instead of just the Federation. And you heard me right, the Federation is its own race. It plays out kind of like a turn-based strategy RPG where you move your pieces around trying to conquer various areas of the map. If you encounter an enemy at your location, you have two ways to fight them, sim or arcade. If you choose arcade, then you fly around battling each other with basically the same controls as Star Trek Encounters had. If you choose sim, then the computer does it for you right there on that screen. Between turns, you can buy new ships, fortify your defense, upgrade your weapons, and all that good stuff. It's pretty tough though, as the game pounces you right away from the beginning. At least on the medium difficulty it does. And of course there's the regular skirmish mode you'd expect from Bethesda. Still, it's an interesting take on Star Trek games. Our 
Shields this are down. is for Earth. All integrity is at fifty percent. Finally, here's Star Trek Bridge Crew on the PlayStation 4. It's also on the PC, and you'll want to play it in VR if you can. This is one of those Star Trek games where it tries to be a super realistic simulation. It needs you to issue commands, press all the buttons, delegate repairs, and all of that nonsense. Honestly, it's kind of been a while since I've played this one, and I can't remember exactly how to play it. It's not something that you can just pull down from the shelf at random and have a go. And it won't let you play at all if you don't have an internet connection, not even in single player mode. That's extremely dumb, I do not understand the reasoning for this. Stupid Ubisoft. But still, if you can get three friends who kinda know what they're doing, but not really, then this game is a blast. You form the galaxy's most incompetent Starfleet crew. It's like you found the keys to a starship and suddenly you're taking it out for a joyride when all hell breaks loose. There was this one time where Billy from the Game Chasers and I think 8-Bit Eric and I were all playing with this one guy and he couldn't hear our mics but we could hear his. He was grunting and cussing and getting really pissed at our incompetence. I mean, we sucked and this guy wanted to do good. And we could not stop laughing at how angry he was getting. I think it's probably one of the best times I've ever had playing something online. Anyway, the main portion of the game takes place in the JJ New Trek Kelvin timeline. But what's cool is that you can actually select the original TV show Enterprise. You can also look around outside of your ship to truly get a sense of how frickin' gigantic these things are. The sense of scale is absolutely amazing. I really wish they had more ships. But I spend most of my time trying to hit on the female crew members who completely ignore me. I will update the chart of our operational area. Whoa, oh my god, what the hell happened to Spock? Seriously. Hey Spock, what happened to you, man? You poor bastard! I also like pressing all of these random unlabeled buttons. I guess in the future people just know what unlabeled buttons do. Oh, and Kirk has changed a little too. Hmm. Overall, this is a fun game to play with friends with lots of different missions to go on. But you'll never leave the bridge. All right, guys, there you have it. Star Trek in video game form, and thank God this is over. Oh, come on. I know you like Star Trek. How do you know I like I, Star Trek? I have video evidence, dude. You standing, like, right next to the shelf of, like, five VHS, Star Trek 1 through 5, and uh -huh. you're, like, proudly standing by them. Roll the clip. Oh, okay, yeah, I don't know where he has the keys or anything. But, you know, uh... Dave White's I, awesome, sir. To tell you the truth, I don't know where they went. But, you know, I know they will be home this evening. The end. Uh, I'm pretty sure I borrowed those from you, Joe. No, sir. I never owned Star Trek V on VHS, and you owned 1 through 5. He even owned Star Trek V. You are a closeted Star Trek fan, my friend. I don't, I don't think I am, but, you know... Oh, I think he is. <laughs> Anyways, as far as these games go, you know, I thought they were just going to be mindless boring old sims but they turned out to be actually a lot more fun than i thought they would so whatever i might have to play some more of them who knows how about you well i thought some of them were good some of them were bad you know there are a lot of hit and miss stuff in there yeah i don't know what do you guys think about star trek games let us know in the meantime thank you for watching game sack computer and program wouldn't that be so lame if, like, Game Sack as a series, the last episode was a holodeck episode and we just ended on that? Yeah, that and, would be lame. And, like, the, the last line in the show was computer and program. Yeah. That would be so lame. Totally anyway, anticlimactic. Time to beam out. Oh, so Jeb, you ready to play Star Trek the arcade game from Sega? My name is Manu and Teirame. I, I played the character Echeb in Voyager 20 years ago. I'm Manu. Welcome Let's go, Echeb. 
Alright. What is the um, object of this game? Well, first you gotta dock with the star base. Oh, well, well uh, what's the triangle? You gotta blast the Klingon warbirds. Oh, they're hitting me, man. My shields are down to 17%. Rewrite power to the warp core. 13%. What the? Why do I suck so bad at. Ah! Why do I suck so bad at this? I should be good at this. Well, you're probably not doing anything to the game since it's a one player game. I'm not even playing? That, that's you sucking? Get out of here. Let me play. I got this. Welcome aboard, Captain. Okay, go for it. Oh, what the? God! Damn it! Uh, okay, what, what am I, the Enterprise? Yeah. Star Trek games suck. Hey guys, got a cool interview with Mon. Mon what the hell is your name? Ma Manu? Manu Ente Reme. What kind of stupid name is that? Star Trek games suck! Alright, we've got a cool interview with Mon. Manu. Fuck, this game sucks. You know, Star Trek games suck. Come on! Fire photon, fo photon torpedoes! God. Damn it, they suck! Manu Ante Reme. Ante Reme. Ante Reme. Game suck. Oh, God. So we got a cool interview with Manu Anti. Come on, why do you keep saying anti? I don't know, I think you're anti Manu. I guess so. Everyone, we got a cool interview with Manu Ante Reme here, who played Icheb on Voyager for two seasons. Put in some Icheb next time. Mm, take that, Activision. Put Icheb in next time. Put in some Icheb next time. Ooh, uh, take that, Activision. Do you like video I games? I think I just screwed up the continuity because in the other shots, my arms aren't like this, so I think I need Jesus to turn Jesus Christ, like no this. one cares. Game sack. Oh, that's even worse. Okay, tell me, Mono, do you like video games? Huh? Oh, game sack. Oh, gross. I hate your face! Game sack? Yeah. They suck even worse. Is, is that the second question you're Yeah, that was the second question. Yeah, okay. So. But I was in Voyager. Oh, cool. Game sack. Hey, guys, we got Manu and Te Reme here today. Uh, Ichab from Star Trek Voyager. And he's our special <laughs> guest. <laughs> no Ichab in the arcade game. There's no Ichab in the 1983 game. I mean, he wasn't alive then. They should have just called the show Seven of Nine instead of Dude, Voyager. she was hot. She, yeah, she's hot. Dude, was she like hot in real life? Mm-hmm. So, um, what do you think about video games? <laughs> Joe and Dave. Yeah, they might take me on. Oh, that's pathetic. Screw those guys. Do you have the sack to be in a game called Game Sack? So, Manu, what do you feel about uh, video games? Do you like them? You're Manu. I'm Joe. Game Sack. Yeah, Joe and Dave might take me on. That'd be cool. No, that'd be lame. Those guys suck. My life sucks. And first question I gotta ask you, Monty. No, yeah, I'm happy to be here. Do you like video games? No, I think video games uh, actually, <laughs> I hate them. I don't play them. Jesus Christ. What? Take that, game nerds. This is a show about video games, dumbass. I'm sorry, I can't be, screw you. Guess I can't be on the show if I don't like Donkey Kong or whatever. Get out of my way, I'll get this. Engage player one. <laughs>